So in last week's episode, our scammer had been trying to get me to send various amounts of money as advance fee payment for shipment of a box containing gold bars and cash. And I'd been making a steady stream of excuses and diversions to delay and annoy. This week's episode will be very much more of the same, and we'll bring the story to a conclusion. So let's go scam baiting again. So these are the scores so far for broken deadlines and accusations of not being serious, and off we go. So at the end of the previous episode, we had this lovely little trophy certificate that the scammer created for me. Some really lovely artwork here. And the scammer then wrote to me and said, Dear Beneficiary, please, you have to move to the next stage to enable this box to leave the facility by 9th of January. Please get back to us with the two document filled with the necessary details we need for the delivery of this box. I replied, thank you for this document. I was able to read this one very clearly due to the absence of pixels. However, there's a problem. The certificate says John Barossa. My name is John Warosa. They said, please, I don't think that should be a problem now. It was an alphabetic mistake. Misplace one letter in your name that will be corrected in due time. What are the details about the delivery bod, the metallic box? Then, your email stated John Barossa as your name. I answered, John Barossa is my colleague. We all work in same office department and I have permission to use his email account. They tried again to move things forward, saying, I don't think we have any problem with that. Our only problem is that you have refused to return the form that was given to you to fill. You've not said anything about it either. The box has only four days to be dispatched from the facility. Please kindly resend the filled document. We never saw the one you sent. Also, the document will be presented to you on the day of delivery of the box. Also note, the box will be accompanied by a UN agent. Please kindly resend the document. Also make payment for the delivery. John said, how do I pay for this? I visited the un.org web portal, but I can't see any option there to make payment for the shipment. Seeing the hopeful glint of money, they responded within minutes, saying, I will provide you details on how to make the payment. Also, would like to know when the charges will be paid. After making the payment, an invoice will be sent to you and all the necessary details you will be needing. I said, OK. They said, you are to make a wire transfer of $2,400 to the bank details below. Once you are done, you send us the confirmation receipt while we hand over your payment invoice. Please, you have to indicate your address, also your cell phone number. So, you know, the sort of information you should never share with a stranger on the internet. Again, I reported this as best as I could to the bank in question, and I replied, I would prefer to pay via coin squirt. Is that OK? They said, you can send Bitcoin. That would be preferable and easier. Let me know so I can send you the wallet ID, also with the scan code to send it. I said, what about fund thrust? Do you have an account? They said, we don't have such account. Can you be able to send it through Zelly or Cash App? We also have Western Union and MoneyGram available. Let us know as soon as possible. I said, I've never heard of any of those things. Are you saying you don't have a CoinSquirt payment tube? Welcome to CoinSquirt Liquid Finance. Making a payment via CoinSquirt's easy. Just follow these 12 simple steps. Log into your CoinSquirt account and create a new transfer nozzle. There are several different types of transfer nozzles, so be sure to choose the right one. Use a cash pipe to link the transfer nozzle to one of your wealth tanks. If it's a regular payment, use a money duct instead of a cash pipe. Join the cash pipe to the inward flange of the transfer nozzle and the outward vent spigot of the wealth tank. Next, simply import the payment tube for the person or company where you want to squirt your cash and stack it in your outgoing payment tube rack. If you might want to use this payment tube again in future, be sure to lock it into the payment tube rack with a trusted tube tie. Engage the transfer nozzle in the payment tube. Don't forget to add a fund floor direction restrictor and an expense limit valve. Set the expense limit valve to the amount you want to pay, then open the fund floor spigot to squirt the payment. See? Easy as that. And remember, we're not responsible for alignment, so just be careful to ensure a secure seal at all junctions of the cash pipe and transfer nozzle, or your money could be lost. Coin squirt. Liquid finance. They replied, please, we don't have an account with coin squirt. Kindly make the bank transfer to the account details that were sent to you earlier. I said, and remember, this is John Warosa responding, who doesn't know that Mert already tried this. I have a better idea. The box is full of gold and money, right? Just take some money out of the box to cover the fees, and write a note in there detailing how much you've taken out. Seemed simple. I don't really know why you didn't think of this yourself. They said, we are sorry, no one can access the content inside the box. That's not how we work, either. Go make a bank transfer to the account details. I asked, why ever not? You're in charge of this situation, are you not? Clearly getting a bit angry now, they replied. Are you trying to make us go against our rules? Please go and make the transfer. We cannot be able to do such you're requesting for. But I carried on. I'm just saying that it seems really pointless sending some money to you just so you can send some money to me. It's almost like something a child would make up. They said, you seem not to be serious. How do you expect anyone to open a metallic box that has a key code? If you can't pay for your delivery fee, we can't do anything about it. So I said, how do you know what's inside the box if you haven't opened it? 
It might just be a box of rocks or something. I'm not sure I want to pay a couple of thousand just to find that out. They replied, we understand you're trying to be sure of the box before making payment. You also have to understand that the certificate of ownership indicates the contents of the box. It also it was scanned, which shows everything is intact. But I wasn't finished. I replied, so you're telling me that you've not looked inside the box. You've not confirmed with your own eyes that it does contain money. They said it has been confirmed to be the content in question because we always scan all the boxes before dispatching. It's been confirmed to be money and gold bricks. Interesting. So I asked, what kind of scanner do you use? Can I please see some record or evidence of the scanning? They answered, please, you're asking way too much. There's nothing like scanning evidence. Also, the certificate has all the information you need about the content of the box. I argued, well, I think you're going to have to try harder than this. I'm not paying a fee for delivery of a box of rocks. They tried a threat. I don't think we have any issue. If you don't want to pay for the shipping, the United Nations will actually deposit the box to the less privileged homes. So I tried one of their own favourites. I don't think you're a serious person. They replied, You've just proven that you have not been serious with us. From asking a way you can make a payment for the shipping, you started asking questions that is against the company's rules. We're sorry, but we can do nothing further. Meanwhile, Merton was getting worried and said, I haven't heard anything from you about this box for quite a long time now. What's going on? They replied, I want to inform you about the box. Your dear friend seems to be serious with it. Are you able to receive it? Again, they'd forgotten a negative and said John was serious rather than not serious. So Mert replied, I've always found him to be a serious person, yes. I just don't know why he stopped communicating with me by email, though. They had also written, It's urgent for you to get back to us as soon as possible. The UN authorities have placed a mandate when the box has to leave the facility, which is on the 9th of this January. Please, if you won't receive this box, it will be donated to the less privileged. Well, we're definitely on track to break that deadline later, but for now, Mert replied, I thought you said John was serious about it. But then they went back to John with something approaching evidence. We had to went back through our information and saw the picture of your box. It has a first and second case. The first is where the gold is. Second case it below down the box. And it's been opened with the code that's where the money is and no one can have access to it. And there was an attached photograph of, indeed, a box of gold bars. Now, I've been accused in the past of seeing the world through rose-tinted spectacles. Let's see what happens when you do that here. Hmm. Gives me an idea. John replied... I think someone must be playing a trick on you. The bars in that box aren't even the right colour to be gold. It looks more like copper. Then I sat back and did nothing. I just waited for their deadline to expire before writing as Mert. You didn't give me enough time to make arrangements. Is the box gone now that the deadline's passed? They answered, imposing yet another deadline. Are you ready to have the box sent to you? Please let me know, Joan. The box is to be prepared to get donated to the less privileged home on Wednesday morning by 11.30am. My colleague in charge of the dispatch to the less privileged is my friend and close to me. I can talk to him to help us get it out, then dispatch it to your supposed address. Undoubtedly a typo in there, but what an opportunity. I replied, how will the less privileged home open it without the code? Also, who's Joan? We'll take a look at what happened next after this short break to answer one of your frequently asked questions. Today's question is, why don't you scam the scammers? Now, I'm assuming the question here is why don't I try to get the scammers to send me money, even though not everyone explicitly always says that. OK, I don't want to do that for two reasons. Firstly, it's a simple case of beware that when fighting monsters, you yourself do not become a monster. I don't want to take money from unsuspecting people, even if those people are scammers, because that changes what I am. This is very much my personal opinion, though. Your mileage may vary. But more significantly, there aren't very many ways to do that without increasing risk to myself. If I want to receive money via bank transfer, PayPal, Western Union or MoneyGram or cash by post, I have to reveal some details of my identity, such as name and accounts or addresses, to a person I know to be a criminal. It's not a risk I want to court. And even with the less traceable methods, such as the scammer's favourites, some gift cards, they're not absolutely untraceable and I don't want a knock on my door from the fraud squad. It's a risk that has a very small probability, but a severe outcome, so I'm not going to play it. Again, just my personal choice, based on my own personal appetite for risk. Anyway, back to the scam baiting. They said, please, it was a typo error. I meant to write, let me know, not Joan. You asked how they would open it. The UN will have to break it up with our machine to retrieve the money inside with the good bars. So here we have two separate subjects, one productive about the box, and the other a distraction about Joan the typo. It's fairly obvious which one I need to pursue. I said... I see. I was surprised because I didn't think you knew Joan, and I wondered if she'd been in touch with you independently of our conversation. They tried to bring things back on track and replied, That is it. We don't know whoever is Joan. I was actually referring to you. What's your plans? So I said, OK. So, as you suggested, please go ahead and break up the box with your machine, and then retrieve the money and gold from inside. Use some of the money to pay the necessary fees, and also to buy a new unbroken box for the shipment of the remaining gold and money to me. 
Of course, that wasn't going to wash. They said, you are requesting for the hardest thing in my powers to do. Actually, that can only be done by the authorities of the UN. I can't do such. But if you want me to do such, I'm your own favour, then you will have to send me $500 before I can do anything. Then, impatiently, you don't want to reply to our email? I said, OK, that's acceptable. Given the unusual nature of the request, please take the $400 from the box as soon as you open it. Deliberately the wrong amount, just because I thought that might be fun. They said, the money has to be paid before anything can happen. I replied, you're the one keeping 60% of the contents of the box. I only get 40%. I suggest you front this money yourself. They really wanted me to send some money, though, so they said, we're no longer interested in any percentage. Just do what I said, and you have the box shipped to you. I asked, you're going to give me 100% of the contents? Minus the fees, of course. They confirmed, the fee is $500, must be paid before we can do anything based on our agreement. So I said, I'm suggesting a different agreement, where you open the box first. But apparently that was no good. The scammer replied, listen carefully, I cannot do anything with the payment of $500. So I tried arguing, where did this charge of $500 even come from? How do I know you're not just making it up so you can pocket a little profit yourself? They replied, if you're not serious with me, you can forget about this box. I'm being honest with you, but you don't want to believe me, that's fine. If you miss this opportunity, I'm just sorry because I don't know what today. I'm not supposed to say this, but I'm doing that. Once the money is sent, I will prepare the paperwork and the invoice myself for the dispatch. So I said, OK, go ahead and prepare the paperwork. Then I waited for the deadline to expire and asked, what's happening now? Has the deadline passed or is the box still with you? Hello? They replied, are you ready to make the payment? Payment has to be done first before the paperwork and invoice of your payment can be sent to you. So I asked, you still have the box? I thought I'd missed the deadline. Please confirm if you still have the box. They said, yes, I do. And you're the one holding right now. Good to know. Meanwhile, John Warosa had also been asking, I note that this deadline is imminent. What hope is there of recovering this box now and proceeding? The scammer replied to John, The luck of receiving this box is just very little that I'm no too sure about. You acted childish due to you don't know how lucky you are about this box. I guess you were just playing also never believed this could work for you. If only you are serious now, I can talk to my colleague in charge of the dispatch of the remaining boxes to the less privileged homes. To snick it out, then you will have to make the payment for the shipment fast because it will have to be shipped once it's taken out of the boxes meant to be delivered to the less privileged homes. Get back to me now if you're serious. So John replied, I want to tell you that I've experienced a change of heart. Looking around the world, I see that I've spent my whole life in pursuit of money, but this has not brought me happiness. What would make me most happy, I think, is to know that this gold and cash will be given to the less privileged homes. So please go ahead with that plan. I think it's for the best. The money and gold wasn't ever mine or yours to take, so no good would have come of it for us. Then Merton said, I just received a lovely email from Mr. Barrister John Warosa. I've always thought of him as quite a hard and serious man, but he spoke about how this whole business had brought him to a point where he realised that grasping for money was an evil pursuit and was endangering his soul. I must say this is a complete surprise to me, but I am overjoyed. He told me that he's already instructed you to proceed with your plan for donating the gold and money for charitable purposes, and I applaud and support this. All that remains is to thank you warmly for reconciling me with my friend. And then, just to rub a bit of salt in the wound, it just occurred to me, if you could please get some photos of the box being presented to the less privileged homes, I think that would be a lovely surprise to send them to John Morosa. Now, I really did think this would be the end of the game, and the scammer was silent for a couple of days, but then, quite unexpectedly, the scammer wrote back to Mert, clearly in a lame effort to save face and claim a win, saying, Hello, I see you have all given up. I was able to get $10,000 from the box, as it has been dismantled and shared to the less privileged homes. So I replied, Thanks, that's what we all wanted in the end. How did you share out the gold bars? Did you get some nice photos of the event? But of course, we all know what really happened, or rather, didn't happen. And then just for one last bit of fun, I thought I'd reply again to cast out the hook one more time, saying, Now that the less privileged homes have been taken care of, do you have any other valuable consignment boxes that are sitting unclaimed? I thought this would be enough and it would be the end, but the scammer replied to say, Your problem is that you're never serious. Even I get you straight in a deal now, you still will do nothing about it. You think all I write are jokes, and then you misuse your opportunities. There is a box that has no one to claim it. Are you in or out? I said, there's another box? Please, I want to work with you on this one. Please send full details of the consignment. It's not my fault the other one went wrong. That was caused by John Warosa. They said, it's fine. Listen, when you're asked to pay whatever charges, if you don't think positive toward it and think you are to be scammed or whatever, trust me, you are doing yourself. In life, you must take risks to get what you want. 
This is a lifetime opportunity, and if you misuse this one, I won't respond to you anymore. Well, an ultimatum. Well, okay then. I said, OK, understood, but what's the actual content inside this box? They replied, content are gold bricks. No money, but it's huge. I said, OK, how much of it do I get and what percentage do you want returned as cash after I sell the gold? They said, I don't know if you think I'm the one that takes charges or money that are sent for consignments here in the United Nations facility. Please listen, this box will cost you $1,000, but you will have to send $500, which is half of the amount when you must have received this box. You send the remaining. Now the $500 has to be paid for the paperwork to commence for the shipment. I replied, OK, please can you pay this using money from the 10000 that you took from the Warosa box? When I receive the gold and cash it in, I'll pay you back. The scammer responded, note, I cannot do such a thing. You are the one who the box will be sent to. Also, you must learn to go extra mile for one to archive anything in life. Try to be serious for once. I said, I don't know. You're the one with $10,000 in your hand that really should have been given to the less privileged homes instead. OK, if you pay the fees, I'll repay you double once I get the gold. The scammer replied, please, you must know I have bills to pay myself. They money is not laying somewhere waiting on me. I've already paid my bills with the one I got. Honestly, there's no way I can be of help if you are unable to send the funds. We have made it easy for you. Also know that there is a mandate when the box will be terminated if you don't hasten up. Ooh, another deadline. But unspecified, so I think we can only score that as half a point. I said, OK, ten times. I'll pay you back ten times the fee after I receive the gold. They said, you seems to be up to something fishy with me. I don't get you. I'm sure you have this money. And why do you find it hard to pay for your own shipment? Please, we can't continue arguing. There's nothing I can do. I'm even helping you here. Still, you don't appreciate. I don't have any money. I said, why do you think I have that sort of money? I know you do, because you just pocketed 10 grand from the Warosa box. And let's be honest, you probably kept one of those shiny metal bars too, right? I'm trying to negotiate with you. It's totally worth your while to make a quick profit by lending me 500 pounds for a $5,000 payback a few days later. Easy money. OK, if 5K isn't good enough for you, name your price. They replied, you ask why do I think you have such money? Then what are you trying to tell me about $5,000? You're not honest with me and I'm sorry this won't help us in this issue at all. All we ask is $1,000 for the shipment of the box. And you tell me to pay for you when I've made it clear that I've paid bills with the money and I'm not having at the moment. Do you want this box or not? I can't continue arguing with you. It's very unacceptable. I said, listen very carefully. Just a few days ago, you told me you had 10,000 cash from the Warosa box. Now you're saying you have nothing? Where did it go? They said, are you trying to question me on my own money? Are you paying my bills? Please, if you can't comply with us, just let me know now. I responded, OK, look, I don't know why you have to make this so difficult, but I think I have a solution. Of course, I didn't mention what my solution would be. They asked, what solution? I said, here's the idea. Take one of the gold bars out of the box, sell it, and use the money to pay the shipment fee. Seems pretty simple, and I imagine this would allow for some profit for your personal use. They replied, you asked for the impossible. Please, I can't do that. 
I suggested, try. They said, please, I can't do anything about this. I said, how do you know you can't if you won't even try? They said, my word is my bond. I can't do anything further. I said, certainly I appreciate your statement of honour and integrity. So what happens next? I just need you to help me find a way to receive the box before paying the fee. That is to defer payment of the fee until after I receive the gold and I can convert it to money to pay the fee. They said, there's no way the box would leave the facility without due payment. We gave you only one option, pay half before delivery and half after you've received it. That's all we can do for you. I said, I'm suggesting we find a way for that to happen. There has to be a way to do this and I need you to help me figure it out. They said, I don't have anything to say. What method of payment would you like to use to make the first instalment payment? I replied, some sort of credit perhaps? Payable later when the box is here? If not that, do you have a better suggestion? They said, you know what to do, just do it. No suggestion. I replied, that's just not helpful. I'm trying to find a solution to this problem, but you're not helping at all. Please try to assist me in solving this issue. They responded, you don't want to help yourself. When you're serious, you can send us an email. I said, please. They replied, nothing can be done. I said, please. 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 Plus. And there, finally we get to the point where the scammer stopped replying to me. At least so it seems. I suppose you never really can tell if this one will come back again. But for now at least, after 53 days of painful and annoying delay, more than a dozen accusations of not being serious and a generous handful of broken deadlines, we've reached what seems to be the end of the journey. I hope you found this entertaining. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.